we're joined by Vladimir Yermolenko for the Media Monitor segment of Internews to talk to us a little bit about what the Western press has been saying this week. Yes, thank you. First, I'd like to begin with the discussion about Ukrainian politics and the Western media are actively talking about, of course, the new parliament and the new coalition uh, and talking from different perspectives. For example, I'd like to, to, to uh, draw your attention to an article in The Economist, which is called Tragedy and Farce. And here there is a, a discussion of a danger of a risk of Ukraine returning to this, you know, usual, typical for Ukraine after the Orish Revolution. Uh, long coalition building and uh, debate between the president and the, and the prime minister. Uh, two other articles, one on BBC, the, the, another on New York Times, are focusing on particular aspects of this new policy, of this new government policy. One focusing on NATO, on the decision to move towards NATO. The other is focusing on the fight against corruption. And my personal impression is that uh, many, many media are discussing that without really trying to uh, to display a broad picture, for example, without trying to discuss uh, the, the coalition agreement, which is a comprehensive agreement trying to, you know, to build up some kind of a roadmap for reforms with clear deadlines, with clear commitments, with covering all the fields of, of Ukrainian life. And basically, the coalition agreement can be this the start of reforms which we are long uh, expecting. Another topic, another very interesting topic is Ukraine's economy. Twitter. And here, international media are focusing, of course, on the bad shape, on some kind of a dark shape of Ukrainian economy, uh, saying that there is a devaluation, saying there is a, the, the increasing debt, increasing public debt, etc. But uh, I'd like to draw your attention to some positive things, some positive story, and one is published Two, basically, two stories are published by Forbes. One is uh, an article asking whether Ukraine could become a new Silicon Valley. And it's a very interesting focus on Ukrainian startups, basically on IT sector, which is very promising, which is very kind of advancing. And uh, the new young companies, new young uh, IT firms, which are integrating globally, which are uh, showing how Ukrainians can do business in this IT sector. For example, drawing attention to this particular very interesting startups like uh, uh, Jobble or Grammarly or others. Uh, and uh, quoting, for example, an estimation from one uh, uh, site uh, about freelancers, which is called Elance, calling Ukraine a third best place where you can find high intelligent uh, people, uh, high intelligent employees. Another article also in Forbes is about investment, why in, uh, who invests in Ukraine in a time of turmoil, and here it quotes Varel Freeman, who is executive advisor of the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, saying there is a blast in Ukraine which is not sometimes appreciated uh, by, by some other people who are focusing on headlines. So these are two articles drawing attention to uh, some positive trends which are existing in Ukrainian economy, uh, probably uh, contrary to this, you know, um, no situation when, when the state still continues to be corrupt and, and the corruption still to be a, a matter, continues to be a matter. And the third topic, the, the last topic is Russia, of course, we, we always come back to Russia. And here, very interesting piece by The Economist uh, called Russia's Wounded Economy, where it draws attention to the fact that Russia is probably not as strong as it seems to be, that is basically uh, already lost $100 billion of reserves last year, in which the corporate sector is hugely indebted and uh, which is basically is going towards the crisis. And to, to other articles, which I would call symbolically Russia's wounded politics, uh, one is in CNN by a journalist who hadn't had a personal experience of, of talking to, to Putin and who is uh, drawing this picture of Putin and of Russians, you know, feeling themselves as to be encirculated and, and kind of under threat. And another piece is by Radoslav Sikorsky, who is um, the ancient former Polish foreign minister, now the, the head of the po Polish parliament, who is de denouncing all those myths, Russian myths, that basically it is the West who started, uh, who started aggression against Russia and by NATO expansion, etc., etc., and who's saying basically a very, very simple and very obvious argument that it was not a decision taken in Washington to enlarge NATO, but basically a decision taken in these particular states in Warsaw, Prague, 
of Bratislava. So this is briefly it, and this is a picture of, of this week. Thanks a lot.